plaintiff, Marquette Price, says the defendant lives in her neighborhood and she believes he's robbed her three different times. Marquette claims after the most recent robbery, neighbors identified the defendant as the thief. So she's suing for the stolen property. Defendant Michael Williams has no idea what Marquette is talking about because he has never robbed her. Yet after the incident, Marquette had other neighbors harass him and her family member threatened him with a gun. He's countersuing for emotional distress. Start with you. Yep, um, so I just wanna start with that. Um, this is a case, um, Your Honor, I have brought to the court um, for the, the safety of my neighborhood. I'm here for the hardworking people in my neighborhood, such as myself, to help preserve the neighborhood. Where um, you all live? Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is the, um, the inner city. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, like I said, I'm bringing this case to fight for the hardworking people, you know, of my community. Um, I'm passionate about, you know, it being safe, especially since, you know, I have children, they reside in my home. And um, a lot of the crime that takes place, you know, in the neighborhood is done during the, during the day. Um, you know, I've been a victim of robbery three times that I feel like um, Mr. Williams is responsible for all three times. My house has been broken in three times in the past year. Why do you feel he is? I feel he's responsible because the neighbors are telling me it's him. They saw Let me get some background from him first. Okay. Young man? <laughs> okay. First of all, I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. I ain't do nothing. I stay in the house. And when I'm not in the house, I'm on the porch and we smoking. You know what I'm saying? We smoke weed. But that don't, that don't mean that we're criminals. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That don't mean that we're breaking into people's houses. You're a criminal if the law there in the state doesn't allow uh, smoking at all, medical or uh, recreational. <laughs> you're a criminal if you're not 21 and you're smoking weed. Guess you yeah, are. Yeah, you're right. Smoking weed is treated like alcohol is. You can't drink under 21 with weed. You can't smoke under 21. And all you young folks out here who think because the law has changed in many, many states, no. All of you all, if you're not 21 young folks, you are breaking the law. I don't know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, I ain't do nothing. I stay in the house, and when I'm not in the house, I'm on the porch, and we smoking. You know what I'm saying? We smoke weed, but that don't, that don't mean that we criminals. You're a criminal if you're not 21 and you're smoking weed. Yes, you yeah, are. you're right. And all you young folks out here who think because the law has changed in many, many states, no. All of you all, if you're not 21 young folks, you are breaking the law. Plaintiff Marquette Price says the defendant is her neighbor, and she's suing him today because she believes he robbed her home three different times. What do you do other than sit on the porch, you say, or sit at home? Okay. What do you other do than other that, than sit in the home all day? You say, well, I'm I home all day. I don't, I don't be home all day. Oh, I Actually, thought that's what I heard. I'll, I'm in look, the house all the I do time. Work, I do work for somebody that works in the store in the neighborhood. You do so work we go to Chicago. The store, no, we go to Chicago, Detroit. You know what I'm saying? What do you sell? Indiana. No, he, he do agriculture. Do agriculture and lands, landscaping and stuff like that. All right, that's okay. And you ride with him and do So when I'm not at home, that's what I'm doing. Okay, how often do you do that in the winter? In the winter? I don't, I don't do it in the winter. What do you do in the winter? Really, I don't know. You don't know don't what you know. do? Just be at the house. Right. Watching that's my what dad. I was my yeah. dad is. Oh, sick. watching your dad. How far did you go in school? Uh, I made it to the last grade of school. Did you 12 graduate? Grade. No. Why? If you I'm were in the 12th grade, about to graduate, why didn't you? Because I got expelled. For what? For fighting. Okay. You sound like you're going directly to prison at some point real soon. That's the way you're coming across today. And if you've done what she says you've done, and it sounds like from my uh, interaction with you, you have, I hope you go to prison very soon to keep you from getting killed. Yeah. I project, unless you change your life immediately, you're going to prison based That's on our you know. interaction there. Put your hand down. Nobody want to hear that. Sit up here lying and bringing, talking about what you do every day. You don't do nothing but get on the porch and smoke weed. Hopefully, you don't break into people's houses. Hopefully. And then during the winter, you don't work at all. You watch your daddy. Come in here with the presentation that you have today. 
leaning all over. That's how you started out, hair looking crazy. That's not how you come into a courtroom, sir. Go yeah. ahead. Yep, so in, um, in 2016, Your Honor, I became a first-time homeowner. Um, that's how me and Mr. Williams became neighbors. Um, I'm a first-time homeowner, um, bought my house in October 2016. And like I said, this case is about preserving the neighborhood. Uh, my daughter called me July 17th and stated that um, our house had been broken into. I was at the grocery store. She, um, she stated that she needed to brace herself before she went in. Um, we contacted police. They came and did their, their thing, scouting um, the back door. We were trying to assess how they possibly got in. It was determined that they went in through the back porch, um, basically climbed my back windows, my back kitchen windows, and then went up to the back porch and kicked the door, kicked the door in on the property. Um, after the police um, did their thing, we went around and did became our own real did life they make detectives. A report? Let me see the report. Yep, the report is right here. <laughs> You have a witness that was there that yes. knows, mm -hmm. has first-hand knowledge, or at yes. least some sort of knowledge to, mm -hmm. to corroborate your story. What is, mm -hmm. This is the police report, ma'am? So, yes, this is the police report, because there were there were numerous items. <coughs> they gave me all of that, Your Honor. Mm-hmm, And none of that mentions yes. him as a suspect because you did not hear anything by that time? I didn't, hadn't heard any... I, okay. I don't know when what's going on as far as, far as, the, as far as the case. When okay. I actually... When did you hear something and who told you? Uh, Mr. <laughs> he lives directly behind me. What did he me. tell you? He told me um, out of his own mouth that he saw Mr. Williams in the alley selling TVs the day of the robbery. It was pro approximately 4.30. He actually said um, verbatim, this is what he said, he said that Mr. Williams said, just give me 80 for the TV. Um, and then after he got through telling me those things, he said, I thought you knew Mr. Williams was responsible for uh, breaking into your house. Because he's all, he also responsible for the other times. And, How do you, um, and, that's and he, and that's he came what he to, said. Yeah, that's what he said. He came to the, he so said... So why hadn't he done anything? Why is he just telling you on the third time then if he knew he was responsible for the other I two? I honestly feel like he, he um, has been kind of... didn't want to come forth because he's ba basically best friends with his dad. Let me allow the young man to speak again in defense of himself, and then we'll get to your witness. Yes, sir. Um, Any of this stuff you know of? Listen, she just told a whole bunch of Don't lies. say listen to me. That's not okay, how you I'm talk sorry, to sir. a judge. You're going to learn very sorry, well how sir. to talk to judges, I suspect. No, go I ahead. Go that. But everything she just said was a lie. We lived in that neighborhood for 20, 22 years or 23 years. We never had a problem with no other neighbor. It's the only neighbor that came and said You have any other neighbors like here today? I don't have any other neighbors here, but there are other neighbors that said they, they are aware that he okay. is a thief. Go ahead. We never had no problem. Nobody. We who? Like, at my house, me and my dad. Okay. We never had no problem, but the police coming, knocking on our doors, people coming, knocking on our doors, people pulling up on me with guns and asking me questions. Is you the one that broke into my auntie's house? And as I'm telling them no, they're like, bro, we're not trying to hear that. You did it. You know what I'm saying? Who is? So basically, who are her family, uh -huh. that, whoever she called. Okay. So after this, the police came to my door. They said, this lady basically going off nothing against you. Mm -hmm. She don't got no proof, no evidence. Mm -hmm. And she, we heard that she been harassing you. So mm -hmm. basically, I was finna find, file her harassment, but I never did that. My house, me and my dad, we never had no problem with the police coming, knocking on our doors, people come knocking on our doors, people pulling up on me with guns and asking me questions. Is you the one that broke into my auntie's house? And as I'm telling them no, they're like, bro, we not trying to hear that. You did it. You know what I'm saying? Who is? So basically, Who are her family, uh -huh. that, whoever she called. Plaintiff Marquette Price says the defendant is her neighbor, and she's suing him today because she believes he robbed her home three different times. So what you just told me is that the woman made reports to the police. The police said they do not believe her at all. In fact, we're here to see if you want to charge her with harassment. All right. Your witness here? Yes, yes, um, witness, witness, witness right. here. All right, come on um, up. Monte. How you doing, Judge? Yep. Good, mm -hmm. state your name. I'm Montreal, Adele. I'm the one who he admitted that he broke into my auntie's house too. I came over the third incident. I didn't even know about the first two until the third one. So I caught him leaving his house, so I pulled around the corner. What, how are you associated? This is my auntie. Got it. 
I pulled around the corner. He had his shirt off with the same jeans, the same sweatpants on that's in the picture that I got. I asked him sitting in the car, is this you? He said, no. So I opened my car door, I get out, and I stand him face to face, this is not you. He said, yeah, that's me. I couldn't see it at first. I said, so where's my auntie cameras and everything else at her house? I'm walking around looking for it right now. And okay, I believe sound, he the one who took it You sound very from. convincing. What about this picture you say you took? It's a picture of him with Sir? no shirt on. So I wasn't the one who pulled up on you? Sir? Yeah, you, you don't want to put up on me with the tell gun. Tell me what happened. Listen. No, put up on me I with the gun. Did I tell you about saying listen to me? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just a habit. It's a habit. Go I'm ahead. Well, You're okay, going to break sir. that habit in court. Go okay, ahead. Okay, sir. So I think he the one that put up on me with the gun. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> think or no. he, he flashed the gun. He was like, and he pulled out his phone. He's like, this your picture? <laughs> or you the one that broke into my auntie's house? Why are you showing a picture of his phone? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, nah, bro, you tripping. That couldn't be me because I don't break into people's houses. Then he hopped out with the picture, like, so this not you? So if I call my auntie, blah, 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 and, and ask her, is this you? She gonna say no. Why you holding the gun like this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, I don't know what she told you, mm -hmm. but I don't break into people's houses. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then he was like, so uh, where are all the cameras and all this, the stuff that you took? I'm like, bro, I ain't Put got your hand down. I'm not right. interested in talking to you. Go ahead. Right. And I'm telling him, I don't got nothing to do with that. And that I don't know what happened. Right. And I, was, I told him, like, I was looking out, trying to find out what happened to it in the neighborhood. That's when... Oh, you were helping out. That's what, when he <laughs> came to stop you, you were helping out, looking no, for I what happened. I was going to the store. Oh, I thought you said you no, were I'm looking... No, I'm saying, I would ask... Because, look, he got a gun to me. I would say anything mm -hmm. I can, you know oh, what I'm saying? Oh, so you told him you were out looking for... I told for him... Listen to me. Now, you just told me that you were looking for the things. That's what I told him. Got it. Because he got a gun on me. Okay. He pulled the I'm gun. Not for that. He said, I'm looking for it right now. <laughs> Your counterclaim is because they did what to you, sir? Because of now when I go and look. When I look, there he go again. I'm gonna let you go ahead and talk to the next judge like that. Your counterclaim for emotional distress is dismissed. Uh, I don't believe you're entitled to any emotional distress. I believe you're entitled to an arrest and prison. I believe them 100%. They're clear and concise, trying to protect the neighborhood. She got to call her nephew over, who you know don't play, and he came <laughs> over there, gun or no gun, you were gonna talk to him, a little scroungy behind and as big as he is. You were gonna talk to him, doctor, and you did. It and you confess to it. As he said, I believe in 100%. Good luck to you all. Thanks for protecting your neighborhood. Continue to do so. Judgment for the plaintiff. Your claim is dismissed. I hope you change your life real okay. soon because you act in your posture. Look at you there now. Why Turn your head to that. Have a good day. Judgment Thank for you, the Honor. plaintiff. Thank you, your Honor. claim is dismissed. <laughs> Love you, Judge. <laughs> And now, a special throwback update as the plaintiff is back in Judge Mathis's courtroom. Plaintiff Adrian Lewis says he and the defendant had a fling despite the fact that she's 20 years older than him. Adrian claims after the defendant said she was looking for a sugar daddy, the two of them broke up. And he's suing her today for a rental deposit, credit card charges, and harassment. Defendant Marquette Price says after she started dating Adrian, he became physically abusive. And then she discovered he was a compulsive gambler and a liar. Marquette is countersuing Adrian for breach of contract and emotional distress. Let's start with you, sir. So me and Marquette, we used to work together. Uh, we had like a fling back then. She had a fiance. Uh, we ended up starting a sugar baby, sugar mama type situation back then. Uh, okay. Her fiance ended up going to jail. Then she ended up moving me into like his place. Um, she decided that we, she wanted to. Oh, uh, you were the sugar. Yes, I was the sugar. The baby. baby. Yeah, I was. She a little, had the sugar. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, okay. a, little, a little bit smaller back then. <laughs> but uh. No, I'm not making reference to that. No, no, I'm no, saying no. you were the one benefiting, so I didn't know who was who. Mm -hmm. So. You were benefiting from her work. Yes. Uh, and that's the best way to put it. Um, she had the money. Yeah. Okay. And all right, got it. Go ahead. But yeah, she decided she wanted to do a more serious relationship. So I decided, hey, let's kind of like do it. It didn't end up working out. She decided that she wanted to have like a sugar daddy at the time. So I wasn't going to fit that role. We decided to. 
ended up breaking up. We were like hooking up at the time, still when she had her sugar daddies. Uh, she recently reached out back to me. She had a fiance. I, apparently he cheated on her and she wanted to kind of like- Revenge sex with you? Well, she wanted to start a relationship back up. With oh. Him. She didn't want to work out with him at all. She kind of contacted it. me and uh, I decided, hey, let's try to give it another try. It didn't work and that's why we're here now. Plaintiff Adrian Lewis is suing his ex-girlfriend who claims Adrian physically abused her on more than one occasion. Why didn't it work this time? She decided to change her mind. We decided on like, hey, we're gonna do 65 me, 35 me. I had money now, so I could kind of- What are you saying? 35 me, 65 me? I, I would cover 65% of the bills. She would cover 35% oh. of the bills. When you all were together? Uh, now, yes, now. Okay. And she decided probably five days into it that she didn't want it, so. Okay. Let me hear from you, ma'am. Give me some. Uh, sure. So um, I was actually on here, Judge. Um, I was had sued my neighbor that kept breaking in my house. Um, so I didn't. I thought I, I, thought I recognized. Yeah, I, wasn't I never sure. thought I would I be said, I back think that's in the here woman that gave me all that sue. money years ago. I took all that money <laughs> from you. Years ago. I think that's her. I think that's that woman I took all that money from when she was my sugar mama. <laughs> But that's yeah. it's not from that. All right. But yeah, sugar mama, sugar mama. Let me start off by saying sugar mama has never been my thing. I don't believe in paying for grown men. But um, anyway, I met Adrian um, in 2014. Uh, that was the end of 2014 at our old job. We used to work together. Um, we wind up befriending each other uh, originally at the job. Um, got cool. Um, basically, uh, after that, you know, I was engaged to be with someone else. He, I went to jail. We kind of broke up like while he was in jail. And, um, so I started, I wound up renting out his place and he did, you know, wind up eventually moving into that place. But, um, you weren't I was living there from the very, what's that? Were you living there? Yeah, I was living there. Okay. Just, just me and my daughter. All right. You mm -hmm. said that place as if it had, it was disassociated with you. Yeah, so he moved into yeah, my a, place. Yeah, he moved into my moved in with you and your children. Yeah, my child, my one daughter. Okay. Um, originally, uh, when we met at the job and befriended one another, I just really had intentions on being friends with him because he's 20 years younger than me. So I was very hesitant to even start anything with him. But um, we did get cool. We did become friends. Uh, eventually, we did start having sex. Um, uh, we kept having sex, uh, got got closer. As we got closer, um, like I said, he wound up moving in with me. We got serious. Um, I also realized that Adrian, um, we had a, our first big argument that summer of 2015. And during that argument, Adrian had choked me. Um, this is 15, you said? 2015, yep. And a month later, we had another big argument and he kicked me put a big bruise on me. I, then I realized Adrian was, you know, an abuser. I also realized about six months to a year in, he was um, a compulsive gambler, gambler and liar uh, too. So I was like, I doubted from the very beginning if we were going to really last for the long haul. And then just add to it that, you know, he's 20 years younger than me. You know, he was very immature and silly um and ultimately you know it was so on and off again for the last seven years we would break up get back together um at his asking because he was always calling me asking for another chance you know i never really you know after the abuse and the gambling and the lying i really didn't want to try with adrian again um but ultimately you know i did decide to give him another chance and that's a that's when basically was that that was in June of 2022. He had been in June of 22. June okay. of 22. I decided yes. to. Let me uh, get a little understanding of things here. Mm -hmm. And one, you all started dating in to late 2014 or 15. All right. You knew he was then 20 years younger than you. And then how old are you? I am 28 now. Right now. You're yes. 28. Yes. Track 22 minus 14. Is that eight? Yeah. How old are you, ma'am, if you don't mind? You say you're 20 years old. I'm 48, Your Honor. Okay. 48. So you were 20. Yes. And she was 40. Right. Okay. 
plaintiff, Adrian Lewis, is suing his ex-girlfriend, who claims Adrian physically abused her on more than one occasion. How long did it take you to move the 20-year-old man into your house? I moved him in uh, probably a, 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 within a couple of months, okay. about two to three months. All right. Three weeks. So let's catch up to where we at. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff is, I have no clue what was on y'all mind, particularly you. Yeah. <laughs> particularly you, putting a 20-year-old man in your house with your daughter. Mm-hmm. Woo. Yeah. All right, go right ahead, and you're twice his age. Yep, uh, mm. twi yeah. twice his age. And then um, you're shocked that he was immature so much so that it was a tumultuous relationship. You're yeah, shocked he, he was that a 20-year-old wasn't mature as, as a 40-year-old. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was mature okay. in other ways, uh, right. though. Okay. That's, um, um, let me ask what you're suing her for today. How does she owe you? I'm suing her because we had an agreement. We were going to get a place together. Again, it was going to be a 65. I'll cover 65% of the expenses. She, she will cover 35% of the expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, we were getting pr stuff for the house. I gave her my car so that she can use it to. Do you all sign the lease? Uh, she, I believe she signed the month to month. Okay. I'd never met the owner. Mm -hmm. She just got So what happened? Uh, basically, I gave her my car to like buy some house expenses. She decided to start a shopping spree, buying like some clothes at Forever 21. I decided, hey, if you're not gonna buy house stuff, I'll just buy it online. I cut the card off and she got upset about that and decided to say, hey, I don't wanna be with you anymore. You gotta leave and I left and I wanted a reimbursement for all the stuff I paid for though. So. Ma'am? Yep. So um, basically, and like I said, in June 20, 2022, we, I decided to give him another chance. Um, once I did, I did tell him that, you know, I would need to get out of my current situation, get an apartment. Um, I did that. I got the apartment. Um, July, I told him, you know, this is what's required for the apartment. He said, I'll pay the majority. Now, I'm thinking we're a couple. He gave me the car saying, here, go get what we need for the house. He, we never said it was a loan or anything like that. Um, and also, our agreement was he would pay. What did you get? Though? What's that? He said you didn't get all things for the house. Yeah, I, I, and I told him that I spent I spent forty one dollars at Forever Twenty One for my daughter for some back to school stuff. Mm -hmm. And I and I told him. What did he say to that? And he act like uh, he well, he said, well, we had we had an agreement. You want post you want post this, you want post this. That all that. you know of? That was the only thing. And the fact I said, hey, before I gave her the card, I said we have a budget. I want to stick to the budget. Please don't. Yeah, forty three dollars. You were looking for a fight. She had brought a ton of clothes. Like we had no space at the house. It was about for the daughter. Yes, 15 boxes of just clothes in a one bedroom apartment that we had. Ma'am? Yeah, we, I mean, we did bring, we did have belongings from our prior residence. We, I did have considerable clothes, you know, for me and my daughter. She needed some additional. He said she had excess, and that's what she, he's saying that she you spent needed money some on clothes. something that wasn't needed when you all had discussed that everything should be focused on your new place. So the 1600 what is that for then? Oh, uh, we needed stuff for the house. So I went to Sam's Club, Costco. Is Not that included in the sixteen? That's yeah. the sixteen hundred. Yeah, for what all. Do you think you should get it back? Uh well, she told me she needed these type of things for the house. Yes. So if they were for the house, where the both of you gonna stay? What? Why should you get it back? Because I no longer stay at the house. She let me. On whose uh, request? Her. She said you must leave. Yes. She told me I don't want to be with you anymore. You need to leave. Judge Mathis will be right back. Is your ex denying he fathered your child and you want a paternity test? Call 1-888-VERDICT or visit us online at www.judgemathistv.com. Plaintiff Adrian Lewis is suing his ex-girlfriend who claims Adrian physically abused her on more than one occasion. Ma'am? Actually, um, he was the one who suggested we break it off um, first. Tell me um, how it started, I, the, this last breakup. Yep, so the last breakup started from I had caught Adrian in a lie. When? You, um, this was around July. Okay, the July. 12th, so July the 12th, and I was just like, um, he said he made six figures. And then um, we had a conversation like about what he was making. And so he lied about his income. And so I told him, I said, Adrian, um, why did you tell me you you make six figures like when you don't? 
and I wanted to make sure he was, you know, we was on uh, starting out good. And before lies. you move in with him a second time, mm -hmm. you don't know how much the man makes. You never discussed that. Perhaps you said you're going to be able to pay your half. Did you all have a number? We just had the 65, 35% agreement. Didn't know what that would be. Of, you of just the, the did like you did the first time. Well, Come I, on in, don't be in my daughter I, and I, live I, here. Go ahead. No, but I knew because I actually have a budget. I tried setting up. Did you tell up. her that y'all had a discussion? Yes. Did she ask you how yes. much you made? Yes. He, and you I, told her? I told her exactly how much I made. I showed her my budget. And what she I said? She says fine. She, she said she thought I made more, but I said, hey, I've been on a vacation. That conversation occur? That conversation did not occur. And that we started talking about, like, just how much he was making because during the times we were broke up, he was always sending messages trying to make things, I guess, better than what they seemed so I could give him another chance. So tell me how the end occurred. That day? Is that what happened? That day or night? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when you told me to get out? That's when I told him to get out. When okay. I said, okay, you're lying, you're lying again, you know, because he had already been lying in the past about gambling and all of that stuff. I was like, okay, I didn't caught you lying again. I said, I don't want to deal with you if you want to be she lying. How has you? Well, can I uh, just bring up something? Mm -hmm. So she says I abused her. There's one instance where I found out that she cheated on me and I lost my temper and smacked her. There when was, was no that? This was back in 2015. Okay, and you're saying that's the only time you ever put your hands yes, on? Yes, that was the only time I okay. put my hands on. It was just... Glad you took time to clear that up. Yes, I appreciate it. Uh, and for you to go out your way to do that means I give more credibility to that statement, and so I'm more likely to believe you. Her decision making is very flawed. Your reasoning seems to be very flawed as well, ma'am. And you put him out, so you that was an illegal eviction. So I'll just start there. Well, I didn't ask him to go. He offered to he offered to go, Your Honor. He said no, I, I just don't... asked you, did you put him out? Did I didn't put him, him I did not you put him yes. out. That's I did not put him yes. out. I did I, not put him I out. I asked him I Okay, well, I'm gonna see. All right, all that. See. He's gonna show me, ma'am. Okay. On the 19th, oh, well, on page 19, uh, 717, she said, I'm done. It's my apartment. You are leaving. Yeah. By August, please be gone. Yeah, that was Have a good living, day. Your claim is dismissed yours and granted. Have a good day. She I, lied to me and said that she did not tell you to leave. That was only and you have it right me. there. Goodbye. I, have a good day. Don't get tricked by these young boys no more. I just hope she has a good life. Adrian, Adrian, you know, you know, you lied. You know, you lied. You know, you said you was you said you was going to go first, and I just agreed.